among the pe people who were studying artificial intelligence. Since the early 1960s, it was always supposed that we'd be able to make machines that could move around in a natural environment without too much problem. And the reason we could do that was because the world, in some sense, was just made out of simple objects. There they are, and all you have to do is look at them, and you see them, and that's vision. And then the complex problem is not how to see or what to see, but how to act in reference to what you see. But it turned out that the AI people ran into this problem, essentially sometimes known as the frame problem. And the frame problem is, is that there's almost an infinite number of ways to look at a finite set of objects. So the fact that it, that vision, for example, turns out to be way, way, way more complicated than anybody ever ever estimated. In fact, you can't actually solve the vision problem until you solve the embodiment problem. So uh, an artificial intelligence that doesn't have a body can't really see, because seeing is actually the mapping of the world onto action. And so that was figured out more, more or less by a robotics engineer called Rodney Brooks. But, but what's at the bottom of this is the idea that any set of phenomena can be seen a very large number of ways. So like there's a bunch of pens in front of me here. You know, and when I look at them, my brain basically notes that they're a grippable object with which I can write. So I see the function. Like, like if you look at a beanbag, you see a chair. Not because it's got four legs and a seat and a back, but because you can sit on it. And, and most of what we see in the world, we actually see functionally rather than see as an object and then interpret the object and then figure out what to do. So the function of the object constrains our interpretation. But there's an endless number of interpretations. So, for example, if I was going to paint that, you know, paint on canvas this set of pens and try to do it in a photorealistic way, I would be looking at tiny details of these objects, the, the multiple shades of red that are there and the multiple shades of, of white and black. And, you know, I would decompose it in many, many ways. And so the AI guys ran into this problem, which was that looking at the world turned out to be exceptionally complex. And that's still being solved now.